Usually I prefer to talk about uh, wellness and health as opposed to sickness and death, but today I want to talk about the top 10 causes of death and give a little uh, insight on some of those. All right, according to the CDC, in 2020, they listed the top 10 causes of death. Number one was cardiovascular disease. No surprise, it's been up at the top for quite some time. Number two is cancer. Uh, number three, though, uh, the COVID made its appearance and uh, jumped up to the top and got all the attention that year. Uh, number four, we have injuries and accidents. Number five, Alzheimer's and dementia. Number six is diabetes. Seven, flu and pneumonia. Eight, kidney disease. Nine, stroke. 10 is chronic lung and respiratory disease, and 11, used to be 10, bumped to 11 was suicides. So those are the top 10 causes. Obviously these are, I, I believe, the US because if you look worldwide, there's things like uh, uh, AIDS, malaria, starvation, stuff like that that bumps into those top 10 in other countries. The good news about this is many of these things can be prevented through a lifestyle change. Um, I've said before that someone can be the most regimented, strict, conscientious person in the world and still die of something they're trying to avoid. Um, if, when it's your time, it's your time. But there's definitely things we can do to stack the cards in our favor. I'd like to take just a minute and talk about number three, the new kid on the block. Let's talk about COVID. It's been uh, in the news like crazy for the last couple of years. Um, I know some people question if it really is number three because the way some of the cases were, you know, people with chronic cancer were diagnosed with COVID while on their deathbed and so they gave it a COVID count or motorcycle accidents. I've seen some crazy stuff like that. I've also noticed people complain that you know the flu just disappeared off the map when COVID came. So regardless of that, if they're, how accurate the reporting is, it can go both ways also with that. Um, still, we just want to talk a little bit about some of my concerns with our reaction to it. I hate the fact that it's been uh, politicized, that it's divided people. But what really bothers me is our reaction to it, how we've uh, taken people's livelihoods, uh, damaged the economy, mental health. You've seen uh, so many problems now with you know, domestic violence, depression, anxiety. And I think a big reason for that is just the media just pumping fear, 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 just always trying to be in the headlines, what if the sky is falling type of thing. Now, it's certainly something we need to be careful about and be prepared for and know how to handle, but I've been sort of disgusted by the way people are always just trying to peddle fear. So just take, think a minute, what if we treated all these other 10 diseases like heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, all these other things that are take so many lives every year. What if we use the same mentality and same approach that we have with COVID? Now, depending on the different countries and states, they've had different reactions to this, the way they've handled this. Um, some I applaud, others I, it worries me. But I uh, think if, they, if, if we dealt with these other diseases the same way, for instance, you might say from now on you need, uh, you need a government pass if you're gonna go to fast food, a checkbox, you can only go a certain amount of times. They might have like a, a calorie counter, someone to keep in track your quota for your fats and sodium. Um, cholesterols, any company that sells a product with a known carcinogen in it, we need to shut them down. Uh, we need to bring back prohibition for drunk driving, cirrhosis of the liver, all these problems that alcohol causes in society. How on earth can we let that exist? Lung disease, time to ban all tobacco in its different forms. How about exercise? Um, you've got your mandated certain amount of time you've got to spend on the treadmill or walking or lifting weights. Why don't we get the government to get in our lives to that point? I can appreciate the fact that people want to take care of themselves, their family, their society. Uh, to have better health to avoid a lot of these problems but again just look at the way it's done sometimes i think they're overreaching and uh, some of the, the methods they've used and some of the strong arming and mandates and taking away people's uh, freedoms and standard of living has been very difficult to watch sickness and death ironically have been part of life since the beginning it's something we've always dealt with um, it just seems that we've had such a different uh, mentality over the last couple of years there are obviously different methods to deal with it. Um, I prefer education and encouragement as opposed to strong arming and mandates. Um, it's, it's hard to, to convince someone when you're doing it by force. So I just want to point out, eventually we're all going to die of something on that top 10 list, most likely. Um, instead of living in fear and anxiety and stressed and worried about what's going to kill us, let's live life to the fullest. Take whatever precautions, um, lifestyle changes to live a healthier life to you know, improve your odds of, of greater longevity and quality of life. But uh, let's not live in fear. I, that's something I think has really impacted our health and our well-being over the last couple of years. So hopefully in 2022, I know we're gonna keep getting variants and diseases and things popping up, but I hope as a society we can deal with it uh, with more unity, hopefully less division, um, less politicism of disease, and uh, hopefully with uh, better taking better care of one another. But I hope for a, a 
healthy and a, an improved 2022 in the upcoming year when it comes to us fighting disease.